Hello everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies, My Emotional Audit, and now Emotional Masterclass as well. And this is the second in my talks about advertising and how we speak to trauma, how we manipulate the wounds that people have in order to sell them things. And I should preface this with um, that advertising is neither good nor bad. It could be bad when it's selling people products that just make them feel insecure or purport to help them from feeling insecure, but actually just perpetuate, you know, things like, um, I don't know, to make you look younger or whatever. Uh, or it could be that it goes towards making you feel wonderful, you know, and having better relationships. And, you know, some of the courses, for instance, that I see advertised do that. So it's not that I'm anti-advertising, it's just that I'm aware that there are ways in which it's used to perpetuate the isolation and the kind of social exclusion that we already feel. And uh, how I came across this kind of linkage between the schemas that we run, the wounds that we have, in other words, and how we are sold products is because I went to a, an advertising conference last week and I've talked about that in the first video and I'll I'll link uh, that in uh, in the description here. But I just wanted to finish up my discussion of that because we were talking about Jeffrey Young's schema therapy and how the the book um, that kind of changed the way we think about trauma uh, was written. Um, Reinventing Your Life was the name of the book. It's it's a book for lay people. There's also one for therapists as well. But it outlines 18 schemas, um, of which 10 are the most significant. And I, I think I covered the first six uh, in, it might have been five or six, in the first video that I did. Uh, yes, the first six, because I remember the last one of that was social exclusion, funnily enough. And the belief system that was running in that was I don't belong. And how you talk to that is you create a mastermind group. And I was laughing because that's exactly what I've done uh, with the masterclass, unknowingly, of course, because I just thought it was a cool thing to do and to invite people to join me in this new world understanding of who we are and how we're here to kind of heal ourselves and heal our planet. So I won't go over that, but I will cover the, the last four um, and why they're important. Uh, and number seven is uh, failure. And the belief system that runs with that wound is I am inadequate, which I mean, a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome. You know, I shouldn't be here. I'm going to be found out. That's kind of what's running that one. And how you talk to that is interesting. Um, things like, you know, headlines. What is something X, whatever it is, costing you? You know, what is um, what is your mortgage costing you or what, what are your electric electricity bills costing you and how you could solve that uh, how to fix it is basically talking to this feeling of being inadequate and being a failure so who would have thought um here's one that's really interesting to me unrelenting standards i have to be the best that's the belief that underlies that one and you have to meet really overly high expectations of yourself at the expense of happiness Right. You just have to keep plugging along the same route to be better and better or richer and richer or whatever it is, more and more famous. That definitely is one that's driving a lot of people, um, but doesn't make you happy. And at some point it's going to come crashing down because you're going to realize, actually, I'm not happy. Actually, I'm depressed. Actually, I'm I can't you know maintain a meaningful life. Um, and apparently this is the secret to what they call the back end sales. Now, this is where you upsell uh, everything, all right? So you say, here, have this package that you're interested in, but for only $99 more, you could have access to this and this and this. And, and this is how you kind of basically appeal to somebody who can never be enough. They can never have enough. They can never be enough. And they'll just want the whole lot. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty tough one to, to use wisely, I think. Number nine, the schema is defectiveness and the belief underlying that one. I am not lovable. Uh, I've certainly had that one in my time. Um, and this is actually also linked in with imposter syndrome. You know, I, 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 I'm not enough somehow. Um, and a lot of advertising speaks to this. You know, what I referred to earlier, we, 
they make we make uh, people feel bad about themselves in order to sell. Well, I don't, but some advertising does. Um, so they'll buy the stuff, the stuff they don't need, really, but it makes them feel good, so they will do it. So um, you're really selling them something over and over and over and over again. So you want repeat purchases and to sell uh, goods that basically add, add very little on, but they help to kind of make the person feel that they're not so defective and they are lovable somehow. And number 10 is subjugation. Um, I need to please others out of guilt. <laughs> you do things out of duty or guilt rather than because you want to. So you're a member of a committee or you're on a, I don't know, um, parents group or you're just in, you've got a friendship group that you no longer feel connected to, but you have to keep going because you feel guilty if you stop. Um, that's the schema that's running that. So needing to people please and to please others rather than look after your own needs. How you talk to people like that, um, you ask them, even though you've done it all, uh, try this, you know. Um, it it kind of gives them the impression that they need to do a little bit more to really say that, that they've done it. And I realise I'm doing that because... Um, one of my bylines with my program is, uh, you know, the masterclass works even if you've done everything, you know, because it's different. And I hadn't realized I was selling to that kind of internal belief, which I, I, I was really trying to be very practical because a lot of people that come to me have, they believe, tried it all, but they haven't done this interpersonal connection that allows the neurological regulation of their bodies. And so, I just wanted to rule out people who've already done a lot. So it wasn't that I was deliberately selling and I would hate to think I would do that to make people um, feel that they need to please me because it's really important that they don't actually and that they're authentic. Um, there is another one uh, that comes up, number 11. So maybe it wasn't 10, maybe it was 11, entitlement. And entitlement, the belief underlying that is the rules don't apply to me. Uh, so how do you talk to that? You say, right, to get the VIP treatment, we see this a lot in, you know, selling anything. You get you get the basic package and then you get the bonus package or the VIP package because it basically says you're special. You're special. You don't belong in the the, the vast majority. You're, you're unique. You need to stand out from the crowd. So get the VIP special treatment. So it's, it's really interesting, isn't it, how we can manipulate beliefs and wounds in order to create products or services. And we can do this in a really good way. And remember, selling is a relationship. So, you know, when I was coming into this space, learning how to market and, and sell what I do, I was very reticent about putting myself out there and actually saying anything that would sound at all salesy. But then I realized, if I don't market, who's going to find out about me? Well, it'll be all the people that have already worked with me or their friends, which is a very limited market. So I have to I have to break the boundaries, really, of what I have always deemed um, selling, you know, that we have to tell people what's out there, that, that wounds can be healed and that when the wounds are healed, your family is healed, not just you. You know, that, and that's the truth. I'm not selling a product with a lie. That's that's what we do is we help people heal and we help them heal their relationships and their lives. So, you know, I think I've got a good, a good reason for using some of these beliefs and schemas because they are very real. Everybody has them. They're all unconscious. So you're not even aware sometimes that you have, you have them going on until maybe, maybe you get into a relationship where it's exposed, where you're triggered. Maybe you have a repeat pattern in your life that keeps occurring. That's another fantastic sign that something is underlying that. Or you have any form of chronic condition, whether it's a chronic pain, an autoimmune disease, a fatigue related condition. They usually point to unresolved emotional schemas running under the surface because they change the way your nervous system relates to the world. And it actually becomes hypervigilant and uh, you're usually anxious. And that's something uh, actually wasn't covered in schema therapy, but anxiety underlies all of these things. So these are all anxieties. 
because a belief that is held over and above the reality has got to cause anxiety. So I'm never enough is an anxiety producing belief, isn't it? Because you can never solve that problem because it doesn't matter what you put into the equation. If you're never enough, you're never going to get to the end result. And, and so helping people to deal with anxiety is another uh, really important uh, thing that I do. I, I help people resolve it. And I do it by looking at the root cause, which is these unresolved experiences from the past, usually that are being triggered in the in the present time. And something that actually popped in this week, actually, was somebody I know is uh, having recurring back pain. And what a lot of people don't know is that back pain uh, is, is obviously it's caused by tension in the muscles. But where the tension comes from is your nervous system and your nervous system may be interpreting something in your environment as a threat. And so, you know, back pain, uh, how many... Uh, things do we know of that are supposed to cure back pain and in fact it was covered at the conference you know it was like uh, get this gizmo that kind of vibrates your pain away or or get a table that turns you upside down to kind of release the neck tension totally misses the point actually because neck tension will recur because it's controlled by your nervous system so you may relieve it temporarily with any of those gadgets but it'll always come back because it believes you're under threat and when you're under threat your sympathetic nervous system has to prepare you fight and flight and it will uh, it will absolutely send blood away from the central core of you out to the periphery uh, your legs and your arms um, and sometimes also into your head uh, that's the basis actually of, of a migraine so it's it's never going to solve the problem to just take away the symptom you have to get beneath the symptom to find out what's driving it and that's what I do so uh, what's interesting for me, though, is learning all these techniques in order to help me get my message put across in a better way. So uh, it's all grist to the mill. I'm very excited to be learning some of this stuff. And um, if you're interested in subscribing or joining me on my group program, which runs monthly, uh, please subscribe. Please see the links below in the description and you will see how to join in in this amazing movement. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.